This video will provide an example of how to actually compute a continuous time convolution. We're going to work with some fairly simple signals so that hopefully the concepts will be clear. The convolution we're going to do in this example is convolving the unit step function with a system impulse response h of t that is this h of t is equal to e to the minus a t for t greater than or equal to zero and it's zero for t less than zero. Okay, so the idea is this is a decaying exponential that starts at zero and uh, we're going to uh, compute it uh, actually uh, two different times. Uh, we're going to use the fact that um, the convolution integral is commutative, so I can also write it as h of t convolved with u of t. And I'm going to start with this one because it ends up making things a little easier than uh, if I start with this one, although it won't be significantly different. So um, the first thing we'll do then is we'll draw or we'll write out the convolution integral uh, for h of t convolved with u of t. So that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity h of tau times u of t minus tau d tau. Okay, so this is the convolution integral to uh, the second expression for convolution. And so um, before we actually start doing the convolution, we need to think a minute about what this means. In this integral, tau is a dummy variable of integration. Okay, and so what's going to happen here is for each value of t, we take h of tau, multiply it by u of t minus tau, and then we integrate over tau. Okay, so we're going to get the uh, area under a plot of tau, or a plot that's uh, h of tau u of t minus tau. Okay, so let's actually see how that's going to look in practice. Again, the idea is that this is going to give us this convolution is a function of t. So for each value of t, we're going to set that value of t here. Then we're going to get this product of h of tau u of t minus tau, work the integral with respect to tau, and see what we get. Okay, so this is actually more easily understood if we uh, do it visually, or at least set it up visually. So let me plot h of tau. So this is the tau axis. That will become extremely important in just a minute. And this is a decaying exponential. Okay, so this is h of tau. Okay. Um, u of t minus tau, this is going to be, on, on, in terms of the tau axis, what this is going to look like is something like this, okay? I have a value t, which is for now an arbitrary value, and my u of t minus tau is the unit step function flipped about the origin and then shifted to the right by t units, okay? So the unit step function starts off looking like this, if I flip it about the uh, uh, line t is equal to zero, then it looks like this. And then if I slide it uh, t units to the right, it ends up looking like what I've drawn here. Okay, so according to this integral, I have to take h of tau and I have to multiply it by u of t minus tau. So You'll notice here that t is greater than zero, 
So under the case that t is greater than 0, let's actually take this unit step function, u of t minus tau, and draw it on the same plot as my h of tau. Okay, now let's multiply these two guys. So for values of tau less than 0, h of tau is equal to 0. So the product of u of t minus tau, this guy, and something that's 0 is going to be 0. Okay, so for values of tau less than 0, the product of h of tau times u of t minus tau is also 0. For, you'll remember that this is at point t. For values of tau greater than t, then my u of t minus tau is 0, so the product of h of tau and u of t minus tau is also 0. Okay, so for values of tau greater than t and less than 0, the product of these two functions is 0. In between, I have the product of e to the minus at, which I probably graphed badly here, times some, uh, so I have the product of this thing times something that's 1. And the product of anything with something that's 1 um, is just going to be that something. So basically, now the one thing that I've done here, which is goofy, is that e to the minus at at 0 is going to be 1. So I actually should have drawn my unit step function and my decaying exponential with the same amplitude. I apologize for not doing that. OK, but so basically what I have then is between 0 and t, this product looks like the decaying exponential function. So I have a function that's 0 until time 0, or until tau is equal to 0. Then it looks like this decaying exponential. And then it looks like 0 again for values of tau greater than t. Now I'm integrating this with respect to tau. So that means I'm getting the area under this part of the function that's non-zero. OK, and so I can actually work this integral. It turns out not to be that difficult. Um, my, uh, uh, my values of tau that I have a non-zero function, uh, I go from 0 to t. So for this particular value of t, where t is greater than 0, this integral becomes the integral from 0 to t. And h of tau is going to be e to the minus a tau d tau. Okay. Again, this is what uh, the product of u and h is uh, between 0 and t. And so this is, uh, uh, this is an integral that's fairly easy to work, particularly if you've been doing this sort of thing for a long time. So without actually describing what the process of going through this, I'll just write down an answer that's almost guaranteed to be wrong. Actually, I think this is probably right, since I've done this a lot. So I get um, uh, 1 over a, 1, that comes from the lower limit, from this uh, lower limit of 0, minus e to the minus a tau, which comes from this upper limit of, or e to the minus a t, which comes from this upper limit of t. So the idea here is that the convolution of my h times u for values of t that are greater than 0 is given by this expression. OK. That wasn't so bad, was it? <coughs> we have, though, we still need to look at what happens in another case. So I'll get rid of uh, some of this mess here. OK, so let's redraw. Oops. Let's redraw. Oh, boy, that's awful. OK, let's redraw. our uh, function here. So we're going to have h of tau, which looks like this. And now, let's see what happens when t, when this t here that we're looking at, is less than 0. Again, we're basically 
uh, we're looking at a function of t, and uh, that gives us then our plot over tau, and then we integrate over tau. So if t is less than 0, u of t minus tau looks something like this, where this is where t is, it's less than 0, and then uh, u of t minus tau stretches off to the left. In this case, everywhere that uh, h of tau is non-zero, which is up here, u of t minus tau is zero. So the product of these two guys is zero up here. Between t and zero, both of them are zero, so the product is zero. And for values of tau less than t, the uh, uh, h of tau is zero, so the product is zero. So basically, with t less than 0, uh, the product of my h of tau, u of tau, or u of t minus tau, is going to be 0. And so this integral is just going to be 0. Okay. So basically then, we can summarize the results we've gotten as follows. Um, h of t convolved with u of t is equal to 0 if t is less than 0. That's the case we just finished. Or it's equal to 1 over a, 1 minus e to the minus a t, if t is greater than or equal to 0. And if we plot this, we get something that looks like this. It goes up to some final value of 1 over a. It's essentially a rising exponential. And uh, those of you that are familiar with RC circuits, you'll recognize this immediately as the step response of an RC circuit, where you're looking at the voltage across the capacitor. So that concludes the first half of this convolution example. I think we'll put together a second half that uh, works the integral where we have u of t convolved with h of t rather than h of t convolved with u of t, uh, because that will hopefully be instructive. So that concludes the first part of the video.